Hey everybody, it's a trout. Hope you're having a great day. I don't know if you know this, but I scour the internet all the time looking for talented musicians that are kind of not discovered yet, but they have great talents. Sometimes I'm lucky, I obviously look out for the major names that people know, like I did recently with Walter Trout and some other musicians that have come on this channel. But I'm always looking for those little diamonds in the rough. Well, I found one in today's episode. I was watching YouTube and I was watching an episode about Norm's Guitars. Now, Norm's Guitars is a very famous, probably one of the most famous guitar shops in L.A. People know about it all across America. A lot of famous musicians go there to try out the guitars all the time. And so I'm watching this little segment about this young man playing, and he starts playing some jazz licks and starts playing some country licks. And I was really intrigued by that until I also found out he was only 10 years old. And I went, holy moly, 10-year-old prodigy already? His name is Saxon Weiss. And I reached out to his parents, and they were kind enough to let me interview Saxon, which is coming up on this episode. Now, he's only 10 years old, and he already is talking like he's been a musician for decades. He's got a great talent, and I think you're going to enjoy listening to his story and how he's already driven to succeed in the music business, so to speak. And did I say he's talented? That's up next. But before we get there, if you like this channel, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to it, and like this video. We appreciate it very, very much. So up next, Saxon Weiss, a 10-year-old guitar prodigy that is going to be blown away by his talent. That's next on The Trout Show. When did you first start playing guitar? I mean, you're only 10 now, so what were you like, come out of, you're, you're born and say, hey, mom, give me a guitar. Uh, I said, no, no, tell well, me. Why. Actually, yeah, I actually started out, my first instrument was drums. Okay. But it goes all the way back since about I was like a baby. And I we would go to church like every, every week. And mm. uh, we listened to all these different kinds of music there. And it was uh, really cool to hear the different music. And uh, at that time, I really liked bluegrass and that kind of melodic sounding stuff. And I like classical, too. Um, but I was still pretty young then. And uh, so at that time, we got this drum set for me. Okay. It was went to Sam Ashes, like one of those kid drum sets, you know? Yep, yep. And uh, whenever we would leave, I would cry. So finally, my uh, dad... Hold on just a second. Would you do me a favor? Is your mom still sitting there? No, uh, yeah. Tell her, I, I was trying to call your dad. He's trying to call me back. Would you just tell him to forget it because we got back on? Oh, okay. All right. All right. Just tell him it's good to go. I was trying to get a hold of him because... <laughs> oh, okay. All right, thanks. Okay. So you got a drum set. Yeah, so, so my dad decided to get me the drum set for my birthday. And... Right. Uh, I was really excited, but I was so small I couldn't reach the foot, uh, the kick. Yeah, the kick. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, uh, what what happened? So I just played it kind of without the kick, and I tried to <laughs> I moved the cymbals around and stuff, and but yeah. So at that time I was liking Iron Maiden, actually. <laughs> so it went from bluegrass okay. to Iron Maiden. But I kind of just liked, you know, how they have like melodic kind of sounding stuff and like the jigs right, and stuff yeah. that they do. I liked that and I liked the energy of the music that kind of mm -hmm. was really strong. Mm -hmm. and I liked Bruce Dickinson, who was running around the stage and stuff. And right. My favorite guitarist was Yannick at the time there. Okay. I loved when he put the foot up on the amp. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, so I really like them. I even like jump around on pillows and stuff, pretending to be them. So anyway, <laughs> um, so we I really wanted to play guitar, right? But it was way too big and too heavy, you know. So uh, mm -hmm. we had the um, ukulele, and I would my dad showed me some chords on it and stuff, and I think he started out with a C chord. Mm -hmm. Or a G, yeah, it was a G, and and like G and C and E minor, 
and okay. that's what we practiced and and then he kind of tried to do a harder one like a b minor or something and uh but, but, I, but it's only it's only four strings right but yeah okay. so it was it wasn't too it wasn't too hard but for me it was harder but i still got it and so i kind of just kept playing it and uh started getting better and we uh we went to hawaii and uh these guys out in Hawaii, it was Ali'i Kiana Aina and Matt Hanado and Bradshaw Ellis, who I kind of played with and I played this family reunion with them on the ukulele. Right. I even did like a couple of just me on there. And uh, so I did that. I played some luau's with the ukulele and a couple of bars and, uh, so we did that, and I was really liking the Hawaiian kind of style stuff. And uh, to transpose that into guitar, I like slack key. I was going to say, uh, I bet you played slack key. If you're in Hawaii, yeah. I played slack key. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So then after the ukulele, when I was able to pick up and carry the guitar a little bit, I started playing. Uh, I tried. I wanted to play slack key. And right. we, we heard it, and my dad would kind of, we did the alternating song, right? Uh -huh. you know? And yeah. uh, so we'd, we'd just try to sit there and go, boom, boom, dun, 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 mm -hmm. dun. And he, whenever I'd come home, he would be on the couch doing it, and I'd be like, oh, man, I got to keep doing this. He's getting better at it. So I started getting to work on it, and, uh, yeah, it just – Played a lot of were, that. Were you using a thumb pick at that I, time, or are you just finger? I wasn't using a thumb pick. Just your yeah. thumb? Okay. Yeah, just my thumb. Okay. And until I saw Chet Atkins. Ah, Mr. Chet. Yeah. yeah, and he really inspired me because he still had the thumb, but also he was using just standard, and mm -hmm. he was using a thumb pick, too, just standard tune, you know? And uh, so I thought that was just really cool. And so uh, we were doing that, and uh, I watched him play with just the uh, bone, you know? Right. But I was amazed on how he could do so many things up high, meanwhile still doing the thumb. That was, yeah, kind of like a bass guitar. He's keeping the bass the yeah. rhythm going, and he's doing the finger thing to, to give the melody, right? Yeah. Um, so anyway... Uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, I started doing that, and that's when I started getting more into the thumb pick. Mm -hmm. And I started trying, and we, had, we were trying to figure out ways to get it smaller because yeah, it your hands are so small, yeah. yeah. Even the smallest size didn't fit yeah. me. So we'd like put it in hot water and try to, try to melt it. it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so that was kind of that, but it was, it, it was kind of, more it started with a lot of just the thumb picking kind of stuff that I like. Hey guys, Jack Ryan Sullivan here at Norms. I've got a new friend over here. His name is Saxon. And I'm going to tell you folks, he's about to take you to Twangtown. How old are you, dude? I'm 10 years You're old. You're 10 years old. He came in to uh, change his guitar strings on his Strat, and his dad said, you know, he kind of wants to look at some hollow bodies. And I said, oh, some semis? He said, no, I want to look at some big guitars. So we uh, set him up with this uh, Gibson Birdland, and then he was sitting over down there with him. He's got a thumb pick on. How many 10 year olds play with a thumb pick? That's what I want to know. I, I, I don't even know what to say right now because you play so great. So, why don't you play us that uh, first thing you were doing just a second ago, right?
but I also grew up liking like Jerry Garcia and the mm-hmm. Grateful Dead stuff. And later, I started liking Transtasio and Fish, but that came later. It was more the Grateful Dead that I always heard around. And so, if stuff. you like Chad Atkins, did you ever listen to Mark Knopfler? Yes, that's what I was going to say. Yes, Mark okay. Knopfler. He was cool because he played like the rock too, but still yeah. with fingers, you know? But the other thing is too, from what I've seen of you is you have a, a somewhat of a jazz influence or something about jazz that you like, but I, I admired your ability to be able to do the Chet Atkins style. And then you threw in this jazz kind of stuff. So when, when you obviously I understand why you kind of gravitated to Chet, what i mean when did you say okay i i got chet here but then you obviously who did you listen to to get the the jazz influence to get the the stylings of jazz who was the one that you went oh i like this well i i started taking lessons we were doing theory that's what we started out with okay and we were doing blues too right and showing me blues stuff and then he finally said okay we can start going into jazz if you want and before that, I was kind of like, oh, jazz, yeah, it's <laughs> it's kind of funny. But And then he kind of turned me on to it, and I was like, oh, wow, this is kind of cool, actually. There's a lot of cool things going on to it. And uh, so he showed me, like, this kind of showing me the theoretical side mm-hmm. of stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, I liked, you know, the numbers of scales and stuff. Was there a particular, did you, did you watch jazz performers or anybody that you liked? Well, I really liked George Benson at the time. He was, I really liked his music because he still got the jazz, but it was catchy too, you know? So that kind of brought me into jazz a lot to really kind of get into it. him and then i liked pat messini ah, i know about I like, that yeah yeah and uh so it was george benson was my first person that i really tell me a little bit about your practice regimen then do you so you when you learn as you said i want to learn how to play breezy by george benson tell me how you did that did you just listen to it or did you did your it, teacher teach it yeah, it was more just listening to it, and it wasn't too hard to pick up, you know? Right. I wasn't too many chords, you know, that were, like, crazy and stuff. So it was just, I think it was, like, D major 7 to B minor, I think, to E uh, minor to A. But anyway, so, yeah, I just listened to it, and I kind of heard what he was playing, and I listened to the uh, the studio version a lot, actually. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think there was it, years ago there was a live version out. I'm sure there has yeah, to be one. On yeah, there, there's some live versions, yeah. Yeah, there's but one that, the studio so you just kind of listened to it and started playing around and okay, here's that, the notes. Oh, that's yeah, stuff. that's kind of how I kind of just picked it up by ear. Yeah. Then as you got you've obviously played in front of people. I've seen you play the acoustic guitar and all that, and we'll get to your guitars in a minute. But yeah. What lent you to go? Were you, did you say to your mom or dad and say, "I think I need to I need to go down to Norms and look at his guitars because all the famous people go there." How did you end <laughs> up down there? No, I mean we've always watched his videos right. and we've always liked them, you know. And uh, we decided to kind of just go check out some guitars there, you know, and just he's got, kind he's of, got a couple, doesn't uh, he? It's just a couple of guitars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a couple, right? Yeah. Um, 
No, but it, we just kind of wanted to see the store, just just the store and the guitars, and right? Just the whole thing of norms and stuff, and uh, it kind of just played out. We were just looking at some guitars, and they're like, "Oh, hey, do you want to do a video?" And I was like, "All right, yeah." And so that's kind of how it played. It wasn't like we we're like, "Oh, do a video for me." <laughs> well, you know? no, I I figured. It's did you did you pick out a guitar and say i want to try it out and then you plugged it in and then they kind of went oh i want to talk to this kid about doing a video is that kind of the way it worked i yeah i first went to the hollow bodies okay the big full hollow bodies not semi yeah and they're like oh be careful with that <laughs> and like, it's it's okay <laughs> and so i sat down and, and they're like oh you're actually not bad so they're basically what you said that's so they saw i wasn't bad and they're like hey we want to do a video yeah. and isn't that isn't that a nice way to say it you're actually not bad i mean <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know well you know the thing about it is x the truth of the matter is when you walk in the store they don't expect you to play as well as you do you do know that i mean yeah. you have to know it now because I'm seeing the videos and I'm sure there was other people around going, who is this kid playing this stuff? <laughs> hey everybody, Norm over here and I've got 10 year old sensation Saxon Weiss, and one of the great guitar players that I know, my buddy Jack Ryan Sullivan, and uh, both these guys are killing it together. And uh, Saxon, tell us how we can find you. Uh, you can are you find online? me on Instagram. I have Instagram Saxon underscore Weiss. Jackson underscore Weiss. Yes. All right, well, this kid's something else. This guy recognizes it. I think you want to maybe produce a couple twos on this. Yeah, we gotta get, gotta get together. Yeah. So, what are you gonna do right now? We're gonna do Cowgirl in the Sand by Neil Young. All right, Neil, look out, because this kid's gonna knock your socks off and maybe something else. What's your next step though? I mean, you, you, you're obviously still playing. Are you still taking lessons or what do you, are you just kind of listening to what you want to do and kind of learning the music? I my lessons. So I do classical guitar with Alexander Milanov mm -hmm. and that's all fingers and stuff mm -hmm. and reading and stuff. And that's every week. It's every Wednesday. And uh, I, I did that like a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and then COVID hit about off for about a year on zoom basically for a little bit but oh, okay not. yeah yeah yeah. okay and uh so then we got back and i'm still doing it and uh so we do that i wake up at 5 a.m every morning and do an hour of classical wow and you're dedicated so, you love it don't you yeah so who's your favorite classical performer though uh i really like andre segovia of course you do I was gonna say, if you don't like him, there's something wrong with you. And also Christopher Parkinings. Uh huh. He's really good. Um, but anyway, so the uh, teachers and stuff. I also do. I'm still doing the jazz and theory, mm -hmm. and also kind of just miscellaneous guitar stuff. You know, like licks or whatever. I if I have a question, I just ask him. And uh, so we do that every Monday. Okay. For like about an hour and a half, two wow. hours. Wow. And, uh, so that's, we do some reading there too. Mm -hmm. We also do like the real book, you know, mm -hmm. jazz words and stuff. And, uh, and then we do just like a little jazz jam too. But that's more of our, the free style kind of thing. And the classical is more of the structured, you know, oh, yeah. like very structured. So what's your goal? 
what do you want to do? I mean, you, you've got, you've got your country, you got your classical, you got your, your jazz, you well, know. I, I mean, since I've been young, like since super far back, I've always Right. wanted to be known for playing a bunch of different genres and being able to be good at like different things, not just Right. one, one thing. So that's Okay. kind of the thing I've always kind of wanted to do, you know, with the guitar and music. And and um you know, one of the things that brings into light is the fact that if you could do that, and I don't know what you're you're still very young, but you could be a studio musician. Because Yeah. very, very famous studio musicians, they do that all the time. They they're not they're known for certain things, obviously, but if you can do all that and they go, Hey, sex, hey, I got I can he could play some jazz for me. Or, you know, and 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 if you if you got theory down, which I I kind of understand, even though I'm a songwriter, it's kind of like I know how to write a song, but you know, it's like that. You you're on your way because that's that's the fact that you already learn all that stuff and that'll take you a lot of work because they could bring charts into you Yeah, you know yeah. and and lay some charts in front of you and you go and you go okay okay and then you make whatever you make every day Yeah. do you do you have any desire to become very famous or well known or play in front of thousands of people does that that, that does that even do you even think about that or i know you were mentioned a while ago jumping around on pillows but <laughs> but what but Is that something you think about? I mean, I, I've always thought it's cool to be in front of a bunch of people coming to see you play. It's pretty special. That's pretty cool to have that many people come and follow you, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. But I haven't really thought of much about, like, the money aspect of Oh it, no, you know. no. The the money comes when you're famous. That's Yeah. kind of what, what's what it is, you know. And, and people, when they pay a lot of money to come see you, it it's uh, it's the best thing about it, I can tell you, and you'll eventually have this because I've had the opportunity to play in front of a lot of people. And when people love you or they like what you're doing, it's very rewarding because all the work you're doing now and you're doing, I'm just really impressed by the fact that you get up at five o'clock and you do all this stuff. A lot of people, when they start playing an instrument, and I'm sure at your school, have Have they started, if the kids started playing trumpet and all that stuff, do you have band at school yet? Yeah, we have band where it's, I, I do saxophone. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. And uh, there's like 16 trumpets, and like four saxophones, like seven flutes. So, Right. um, but it's kind of a cool thing, just another instrument to learn. That's kind of cool to see a different kind of way of playing But you instrument. know that, all, but your theory cups into that too. But yeah, see, it was kind. Of, it wasn't too hard to do the reading No. of that. Yeah. The difference is you can only play one note at a time. That's Yeah. that. You can't go like, can you play a D minor on a sax? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> like, how about a D seventh augmented? Uh, no. All you can Yeah. do is play. Here's a D. <laughs> yeah. And you can't. And you can't bend your strings and all that stuff. Yeah. All right. So tell me a little bit about your. Um, Your favorite, do you have a favorite guitar? So you got a Strat, or is it a Strat, or is it, I can't tell what the brand is on. Well, this, Yeah. this thing, this is a Eric Johnson custom thin line Oh, that's thread. the new, that's the new one with the hollow body in it. Yeah, so this Okay. is hollow. Yeah. And I just got this at Norm's, actually. Beautiful guitar. Yeah, it's really cool. It's American made and stuff. And, Uh, uh, there's a true guitar player. It's American made. <laughs> you already know that. It's like, it's not a Mexican strat. It's an American made strat. You've already learned that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is like, it's super cool. I was in there and I was like, oh man, look at that. And I was like, it was the whole ES335, but combined with the solid body Right. strap. Right. And what's interesting about this guitar is it's 21 frets instead of 22. 23, 22. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And uh, so that's pretty cool. And I've just been loving this one. And So you've got that one, and then the three thirty nine behind you. That's got humbuckers on it, doesn't it? Instead Yes. of the okay. Yeah, this is just all single coil. Yeah. Um, 
I have another strap, just normal strap. Uh, and that one is actually humbucker and single coils. Ah, okay. I've seen where. So it's a humbucker back on the on the yeah. bridge down by the bridge. Yeah. Okay. Um, this one, it's just it's just the humbuckers. Right. Uh, so this is kind of like the one, one back here, uh, like that one's got the gold humbucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds cool for country and stuff if you get it. You know, it has yeah. that nice and and jazzy. Jazzy. Yeah, and then you can get onto, yeah. Do you have? I saw you playing some. Do you have some acoustic guitar too? You have another. Yeah, I have a Yamaha. Okay. And this it's cool if you've ever seen it. It has like this microphone built into it too. Right, right. And it gives it this cool like effect, almost like a twelve-string guitar. Mm -hmm. Um, but I usually just turn it all off when I'm playing on an amp, obviously. I don't, it sounds kind of weird and tinny yeah. when it goes in with the amp. Yeah. But and I also have a Fender. I think it's a travel Fender okay. or like a junior or something. It's smaller, but it's, uh, it's still like a good size. Like you could play it and stuff. Yeah. It's not like a kid's one, but that's right. a Fender acoustic. Yeah. All right, so what's your next step? You're going to keep learning all these great instruments. You're going to keep learning how to play. I know it's a little early in the game, but what do you want to do? I mean, obviously, okay, I'm going to play this. I'm going to play saxophone. I'm going to play this. I don't know. But we're, I, <laughs> have you thought further down the road? What is it you want to take all that skill set to do? I mean, I've always liked the idea of performing in front of people, and I've okay. always liked that, you know? Um, so that's kind of what I'm thinking of doing with just bigger stuff and bigger, you know, it's kind of worked my way up, you know, you're just growing as a musician. And I think it's, I, I, I will tell you this from Mike personally, I love to see young performers become better and better, but you're the next generation and you got your parents that are supporting you, which is great. And don't, don't come back to me in five or six years and go, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> you, you, you have a talent that you were given yeah and and you should be proud of that talent just keep working at it yeah it's great talking with you rick and i look forward to hearing more about you okay yeah. thanks for watching this episode of the trout show for more information about saxon visit his instagram site at instagram.com forward slash section underscore weiss that's Instagram.com forward slash sex underscore wise. W E I S S. As always, find out more about the Trout Show, visit our website at thetroutshow.com. So remember, people, what I always say it's only rock and roll, but we love it. Until next time, see ya.